Welcome to Code Report. I'm your host, Connor Hookstra. Last week, we had three contests, starting with on Saturday from Hacker Earth, the Hour Storm number three contest on Saturday evening. Of course, we had from Leak Code contest 101 and from Code Forces early in the morning on Sunday, we had round 509. And throughout the week, we also had from Code Chef uh, the long challenge. And note that I'm actually filming this or recording this on uh, Saturday evening, so I don't have the top 10 leaderboard uh, for the Code Forces contest, but I do for the other two. So taking a look at the top 10 leaderboards uh, for the Hour Storm contest, we had in first place Gennady, aka Tourist. Uh, in second, we had Lewin Gan. In third, we had Igor Kulikov. In fourth, we have Bodan Prishchenko, who goes by I Love Tanya Romanov on other sites. And in fifth, we had Ui. And in the Leak Code contest, most notably, we had in uh, fifth place Natsugeri. In today's video, we're going to be covering a very simple problem, problem number one from Leak Code Contest 101 entitled Sort Array by Parity. The problem states, given an array A of non-negative integers, return an array consisting of all of the even elements of A followed by all of the odd elements of A. You may return any answer array that satisfies this condition. And note that the length of our array is going to be between 1 and 5,000, and the values of the elements in our array are going to be between 0 and 5,000. So the reason that I wanted to cover this problem is because uh, in the C++ community over the last few years, there's been a real push um, of this sort of narrative of knowing your STL algorithms. And I've sort of been trying to cover that in my STL algorithms series where I've covered uh, a number of the algorithms in, a sev in several videos, and I plan to cover them all. Uh, but this sort of started with a talk that was given by Sean Parent, who is a uh, principal engineer or principal scientist at Adobe, and he gave a talk in 2014 called C++ Seasoning, and in his talk he said this. So you have all these algorithms at your disposal, right? Learn them. It's very important. Then in 2016, Marshall Clow, who works for Qualcomm, and more importantly is the libc++ maintainer, which is the implementation of the ST, the standard template library for LLVM, which is the maintainer of the Clang compiler. And he gave a talk talking about STL algorithms and how you can use them. And here's a brief snippet from that talk. One of the things that uh, various people have talked about in the last um, several years is using standard algorithms as uh, in your code. And then also in 2018, Joe Bacara, who is the author of the blog Fluent C++, gave a talk at ACCU where he went over all of the 105 algorithms in the STL, and he referenced also the fact that people are talking about the STL algorithms and even sort of shout out uh, to the original uh, C++ seasoning talk that Sean Parent gave. So there's a fact that's been popularized across the C++ community over the past couple of years, is that we need to know all the STL algorithms. You've may, we've already seen that talk from Sean Parent a couple of years ago, who transformed a big chunk of code into a very small and expressive piece of code just by choosing the algorithms correctly. And on top of all this, we also have Kate Gregory, who is an independent consultant and uh, has her own consulting firm. And she is a, an advocate for teaching C++ and gives, uh, has given many, many talks at different conferences, CPPCon, Meeting C++, and ACCU. And she talks about having Sean Parent moments where uh, you realize what you are are trying to code or what you're looking for is actually an algorithm. So the point being that we have all of these algorithm advocates out in the C++ community talking about the fact that we all need to learn our STL algorithms better so that when 
we are writing code, we can recognize when uh, what we actually need has already been implemented and is sitting right there for us in the C++ STL uh, library. And so all of this is to point out that uh, the reason I chose this problem to cover is that it is asking for something that is entirely solvable with a single algorithm, and that is a partition. Uh, so we're going to skip straight to the code and just look at the solution, and that is the following. So we have our function sort array by parity that takes a vector of integers a, and it returns a vector of integers. And remember the problem stated that we want to have all of the even elements at the beginning of our array followed by all of the odd elements. So this uh, idea of sort of sorting your elements by a sort of predicate or a condition such that we, all of the ones that meet the predicate are at the beginning and the ones that don't are at the end, this is exactly what partition does, which is an algorithm that is available to us in the STL algorithm library. So we have a simple lambda here that just returns true if uh, the element in our data structure is even. And all we do is we make a call to our partition function, partition algorithm. We pass in uh, the iterators defining the range, and in this case we want the full uh, vector of integers, and then we pass in our lambda. And uh, so the point being here is that we don't even need to know how partition is implemented in order to use it. We just need to know what it does, and we can uh, make a call to this. Now, um, I am going to explain what partition does, but I'm just trying to highlight the importance. So when I was doing this contest, I read the problem statement, and it partition is one of my favorite algorithms because it runs in linear runtime, but it, it's sort of like a sort. It's a partial sort in a, in uh, like there's actually an algorithm called partial sort, but you can think of this as not in sorting your uh, vector or your data structure completely, but you are organizing it in a certain fashion and it runs in linear runtime. So there are certain cases where you do need to do a sort of a, a type of sort algorithm, but you don't need it fully sorted. And a lot of times partition is what you're looking for in that case. And it's linear runtime instead of n log n that uh, the sort is. So uh, I'll be covering partition in an upcoming STL algorithm video, uh, but I just want to highlight the importance of you know slowly learning all of your algorithms so that when you're either writing code at your day job uh, or if you're writing in a sort of coding contest, you can make use of all the algorithms that you have. And it's one of the advantages of why C++ is such an awesome language to code with, because these come uh, out of the bag, uh, whereas other languages don't necessarily have all of these algorithms. So taking a look at the Java solution, we'll actually look at how we could implement this partition algorithm. So we have our, uh, our function here, sort array by parity, that takes uh, a uh, an array of integers and at the top we're just declaring n to be a local variable equal to the length of our array a and the way we're going to implement partition here is basically by calling a for loop and setting two indices i and j i pointing to the beginning of the array which is index 0 and j pointing to the end of the array which is n minus 1 and uh, we're basically going to loop through and increment i and decrement j, and then we're going to break out of the loop whenever i is greater than j. And we have two while loops inside our for loop, and so this might lead you to think that this is quadratic complexity, but these are sort of just moving our iterators uh, or our indices uh, towards each other on top of the increment and decrement that we have in our for loop. So. Basically what we have here is we have our index i which is at the start and what we want to do is uh, increment this whenever uh, or as long as the current element that we're at is even because we want the even elements to be at the beginning of the array uh, so we just want to leave them there. So if the first three elements in our array are even we're just going to move past those until we get to an odd element. And then for j, which is our index at the back of our array, we are going to do the same thing, but sort of the opposite. So at, while we're at odd elements, we're going to decrement. So we're basically going to move these two indices towards each other and stop i when it gets to an odd element and stop j when it gets to an even element. And once we have this condition, uh, we are going to come down to our swap function and basically just swap those two elements. 
And we're going to continue to do this until our uh, indices i and j have the condition that i is greater than j. And then at that point, we know that any of the elements that were uh, in the, sort of the first half or the, f or, or the first section that were uh, odd got swapped to the back and vice versa, the ones at the back that were even got swapped to the beginning. Um, and we have to implement a swap function because that doesn't come with Java, which is a little bit irritating. Another reason why C++ is so awesome is that if you were actually implementing partition uh, in C++, you get this swap, fu swap function for free. Um, but yeah, that's there's a couple different ways to implement partition, but uh, this is the basic idea of it. Two indices, one at the beginning, one at the end, and you just move them towards each other, and you stop whenever i is at an odd element, j is at an even, you swap them, and then you continue to do that until your indices cross each other. And last but not least, taking a look at the Python solution. This is a very idiomatic solution using list comprehension. So basically, we're just creating two new lists from A uh, where uh, we're taking first the even elements and creating a new list from that, and then taking the odd elements and creating a new list from that, and then adding those two lists together. Uh, so the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which for this problem, as mentioned earlier, is going to be linear. Uh, because we're not doing a full sort, we're basically just looping through once with two indices, uh, at least for the Java and C++ solutions, and uh, that's going to lead us to a, a big O of n time complexity. And I didn't mention this before, but the C++ seasoning talk that Sean Parent gave is one of the best C++ talks that I've seen. And also the uh, talk that Marshall Clow gave, the why you should use STL algorithms, the talk that Joe Bakar gave, 105 STL algorithms, uh, which he's actually going to be giving again at the upcoming CppCon 2018, which is just this upcoming week. And uh, several of the talks that Kate Gre Gregory has given, uh, three of my favorites being stop teaching C, 10 core guidelines you need to start using now, and making C++ code beautiful. Uh, I'll leave links to all of these talks below if you're interested in C++ programming or just programming in general. Uh, these talks are awesome to watch. Um, they're some of the best that I've seen, and I've seen a couple hundred of talks. Uh, and so if, if you're looking for good talks to watch, every single one of the talks that I link below are, are going to be some of the best. So I highly recommend going and checking out uh, those talks if you're interested in learning more. Taking a look at the contests that are happening next week, we have two contests from Code Forces round 510, which is happening uh, early on Monday morning. And we also have on Friday uh, round 511. And from Top Coder, we have an SRM contest, SRM 737, happening uh, early in the morning on Wednesday. And on Friday, we have from Hacker Earth the start of the week plus long st September circuits contest. On Saturday, we have, of course, the weekly leak code contest, contest 103. And on Sunday, from Code Chef, we have the cook-off contest. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.